Welcome. Are you all ready? Oh, yes, Your Honor. Maybe we have some All right. Who is here on Pedro Montemaros? Come on up, Pedro. Montemaros. Yes. Judge, uh, just kind of off the record, I'll start out by telling you that there has been a slight change in our applications. Yes. That we asked for that you reset it to finish up the application process for probation. Okay. What? I, I think you're going to want to withdraw that ah. and ask for you to decide between two and five, I believe, is what. what all right. If you all want to do a, a plea page, redo that. Okay. Have you already done that? No, ma'am. Uh, we just, I just have the old one. So I, this is new information since this morning, Judge. So initially it was going to be five silent. Now he's saying, I, I, you know, they just want to, he just wants to, to do offer. Okay. So if you all want to, Write what your to do offer is. Just change it to a cap. cap. All right. And you all will need to sign off on it. So he's making this in between two and five. Okay. Mm -hmm. So would you initial offer for me, please? It's going to be a five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Judge, do, do we need to sign the Yes. Um, and so his plea bargain agreement was really originally for him to apply yes. for probation or deferred adjudication. Now he just wants to do time. And so I'll make a decision because they're agreeing to capify, which means I can sentence him anywhere from five to two years. Well, from two to five years in the prison. All right, court is calling 2023 CR 6552W, State of Texas versus Pedro Montemoros. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Jim Olthus, for Pedro Montemoros. And are you Mr. Montemoros? Yeah. All right, you entered a plea. So the offense of robbery on July 31st, it was scheduled for a PSI and TAP evaluation. And then there was a DDRF evaluation that we were waiting the results on. According to the, your original plea bargain agreement, you applied for deferred adjudication. The state was requesting that your punishment be assessed at five years in the prison, and they were silent on your application. Uh, I've just been informed by both parties that you wish to withdraw your application for deferred adjudication. Could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth that nothing but the truth shall help you, God? Yes, ma'am. All right. Make sure you keep your voice up. You can lower your hand. If you'll state your name for the record, please. Pedro Montemoros. All right, Mr. Montemoros, you understand that your original plea bargain agreement was for the state to remain silent on your application? Yes, ma'am. And you are asking that your application for deferred adjudication or probation be withdrawn? Yes, ma'am. Have you discussed the withdrawing of that application with your attorney? Um, yes. Okay. And there's a new offer that has been tendered to the court. Is that correct, state and defense? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and state, would you like to offer into evidence the new plea bargain agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. State offers uh, state's exhibit one. Or the, sorry, it's two. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Any objections? No objections. All right. All right, Mr. Montemoris, I'm going to show you what's the, the entitled the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the new plea bargain agreement, which the court does not have to follow, you understand that? Yes, the court can go with your original agreement. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. But according to this new agreement, you're asking that your punishment be assessed at a cap of five years and the state will remain silent. All other conditions are to remain. Is that your understanding of the agreement? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Have both party any questions? I'm sorry for Mr. Montemaris. Yes, Your Honor. May I? Yes. Uh, Pedro, you've heard everything here today and we've talked before we came up and 
you've expressed to me that uh, I guess in your in your words, you, you just want to get this over with as well as you can. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And um, you and I worked with the state a little bit about uh, kind of pulling all that back to now it's a cap of five. You understand that means a judge can go anywhere from two to five. And I explained there's no promises made by, by me or by uh, Mr. Wilkins over here about what the judge will do. Um, I was going to tell her a couple of things that I know about her, about about you, excuse me, her, tell her some things that I've found out about you that I think are in your favor, but I'm going to give you a chance briefly. Is there, uh, what's your family situation like? Are you, uh, are you a children? Or just give the judge a little bit of background um, so she can know a little bit about what to do. Uh, I'm not married. I have children, yes, but okay. I really get this one. Okay. Um, when you when you were working, what kind of work do you do? I was doing um, residential and commercial plumbing. Plumbing? Yeah. When you were arrested, around the time you were arrested, and it's been a while now, uh, were you engaged in that working uh, kind of on a steady basis? Not at that moment. Okay. Do you have a, a chance when you're released from jail? It sounds like a skilled job. Uh, is it? Is yes. plumbing something that uh, requires uh, training? Yes. How long had you been doing the plumbing before uh, you? Yeah, I was doing it under the table. I was working for my friend named Miguel. Well, I've been doing it for like a good two, three years on and off. Okay. So did that involve installing things or just were you just digging a, a hole? Or... Okay. That was pretty hard work. Yeah. Correct. But yeah. you were learning about. Yeah, at the same being... time I was, I was learning. Yeah. All right. You all got to make sure okay. that it's one at a time. And I'm sorry, you're going to have to speak up. The court reporter won't be able to hear you. You were, the, the judge just said, when I talk, you stop and I'll do the same thing. So you, by doing the digging to get the work going, you also stayed around, I assume, and observed someone that was a master plumber, right? Doing the work, right? Yes, sir. And you, you were running from that, I assume, correct? Yes, sir. So eventually you would be able to move up the ladder and do the kinds of things that you'd already observed him doing. Yes, sir. Did you assist him in those other jobs as well as digging? Yes, sir. Okay, that's all I have, Your Honor. All right, any questions? No questions, Your Honor. All right, so why did you commit this crime? I really don't have an answer for you. So when's the last time you were treated for your mental health issues? Um, I believe it was in 2016, I think. So it appears from looking at your history, none of it is violent offenses, but you have issues. Your issue is your mental health evaluation, which is bipolar and schizophrenia. And then we have you doing a lot of drugs, meth, Xanax, and heroin. So when's the last time you used heroin before you were taken into custody? Um, it was the day before I was locked up. I got locked up, yeah. Okay. When I got locked up, I was on Xanax. Okay. And then I'm reading the report that your mother doesn't want you in the home, so you have no place to stay. So basically what you're asking me to do is I'm assuming you're gonna ask me to send you to prison for the minimum, which would be two years. And then, because you wanna get everything over with, and then you're gonna come out, you're still gonna have your mental health issues that you're not being treated for. You're still gonna be homeless because you're not gonna have uh, employment when you get out of prison. And we're gonna be right back where we are now, which is you committing a crime and you come in before another judge, only this time you're gonna be a repeater. So here's what I, I can do. You can either do five years in prison, that's what I would give you, or either I will give you deferred adjudication. On deferred adjudication, we'll get you some help for your mental health issues and for your drug issues. But what I can tell you is, one, you're not a gang member, according to the report that I've received. What I can tell you is when you leave the prison, if you decide to go through 
the easy route, which is go to prison and do your time. Maybe they'll let you out in two years, who knows? But when you get out, you're going to think you have your life together. But prison normally is not a place where people get their life together. You're still going to have mental health issues. You're still going to have no place to stay. And the last time you use may be the last time you use, in which case your mom may end up reading about somebody on the news or seeing somebody on the news and having to go identify your body. So you have a choice. If you want prison, I will send it to you to prison for five years. If you want deferred adjudication, I will give you deferred adjudication. The state is silent. But Deputy Laura always says probation in this court is not easy. So which would you prefer, prison or probation? Will I get help with probation? Like, uh, are you, are you gonna, they're going to help me with probation? Like, like. You'll probably be going to SAFE-P or inpatient treatment to begin with mm -hmm. because there is a waiting list in felony drug court, but I would refer you to felony drug court because they have a dual diagnosis that can help you with your mental health issues and also help you with housing and employment. Or you can do prison. I'll take the relation. All right. So how old are your children? Um, my oldest is 12, my two youngest are seven, and uh, one of them passed away, so. All right. So hopefully you can get your life together where you can be in their life. But right now you gotta work on you, you understand? No. All right, so I'm gonna send in to you to six years deferred adjudication. This is the run concurrent with 710670, taking in consideration the following 2023 CR 3373 710671. There should be no contact with the following Tiffany with an I, Ares, A Y R E S. Wayne McClintock, Eskio, I know I'm mispronouncing that, that's E-S-E-Q-U-I-E-L, Rebus, The Best Western at 6855 Northwest Loop 410. 78238. There's a $500 fine that will be probated. I'm going to do a referral to felony drug court. And we're going to do safe P. And he's to remain in custody. Going to do 250 hours of community service restitution. Going to order parenting classes. If he successfully completes parenting classes, then 100 hours will be waived. How far did you go in school? I just made it to ninth. All right. Why did you drop out at ninth? Um, I had issues with somebody in, in the same. I'm sorry, what? I had issues with somebody in the same school. What did he say? Inside the school, he had issues with someone inside okay. the school. All right. The remaining 150 hours will be waived if he obtains his GED or goes to some type of trade school and completes it. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. The UA hotline. 90 sober meetings in 90 days upon release. Field visits one time per month until further notice. Proof of employment within 45 days of release. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. 
There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. So if you start doing well and your children want to have contact with you, it'll have to start off with supervised contact. You understand? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, can I ask you something? Sure. Well, um, why does it have to be supervised if nothing, it had nothing to do with my children? I'm sorry, what? If the case had nothing to do with my children, why, why, why does it have to be supervised? All right. The best I'm way I can... Asking. No, no, no. I under... And I appreciate that. Let me give you an example. Do you love your children? Yeah, I do. And you would do anything for them? Yes. And you want them protected? Yes. All right. So let's say that you need a babysitter for your children. Okay. Mm -hmm. And somebody recommends me to you to babysit your children. Mm -hmm. And you say, great. Her credentials are great. My friends say she's a great babysitter. But you say, mm, it's my children. I still want to test her out. So you have me come to your house to babysit your children. First day, everything goes well. Second day, you say, you know what? I'm going to set up cameras to make sure everything's going well. And I'm going to go to the grocery store. You go to the grocery store. You watch what's happening on your house on camera. I'm great. Right. Mm -hmm. And then your children love me. So you say your probationary period is over. I want to hire you as a babysitter. And your children are so ecstatic because I'm the black Mary Poppins. Everybody loves me. <laughs> so as I'm leaving to walk out the door, I'm happy. I'm like, let me just tell you something. That's that you don't know about me. And I say, uh, I'm bipolar and schizophrenic. I'm not on my medications. And before I came here to babysit your children, I use heroin and Xanax. Do you still hire me? Uh, Will you let me around your children without being supervised? I understand. That's why. All right, probation. Is there anything else he needs? No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Montemoris, is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No. All right, I'm gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes. All right, you can go off the record. So in this court, to be successful on probation, communication is key. Talk to your probation officer. If you feel there's something that they're not addressing, you can always come back to the court and we'll address it here. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. From here on out, everything you do, you need to ask yourself a question. Is this something that could potentially result in me going to prison for 20 years? If the answer is no, don't do it. If it's maybe, don't do it. And in this court, I take reporting very seriously. So you need to always report to your probation officer. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck to you. Okay. Off the record, yes. A British plank is run with precision. A British home requires nothing less. So, a nanny that we need to mold the breed is a nanny that we can give commands. Yes, I like that, James. Hello again, Judge. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. And you're on that side. Oh, that's okay. Who's the prosecutor on Calderon? Did y'all confer with probation? Uh, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, you said we conferred with probation, yes. All right. Court is calling 2022-CR-6748 and 2022-CR-6827, State of Texas versus Aisha Calderon. I have parties announced for the record for the state. Uh, Jason Garahan, Your Honor. Defense. Andrew Fraley. And are you Aisha Calderon? Yes, ma'am. Did you review the documents entitled Motion to Revoke Community Supervision and First Amendment Motion to Revoke Community Supervision in each cause number with your attorney and did you understand them? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Aisha Calderon who was placed on community supervision in 2022 CR 6748 for the offense of unauthorized use of a vehicle on September 22nd, 2022 for a term of five years? Yes, ma'am. And are you the same Aisha Calderon who was placed on community supervision in cause number 2022 CR6827 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one less than one gram on September 22nd, 2022 for a term of five years. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. Right. State, are you proceeding on the same allegations in each motion? Yes, we are, Your Honor. Any objection to the state reading the allegation and the defendant's answer being for both motions? Defense? Any, any objection? No, Your Honor. Right. State? 
Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number 44 on or about the 26th day of October 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Isha Caldron did then and there fail failed to comply with the rules and regulations of Esperanza Court and the defendant refused to comply with the treatment recommendations of the court in violation of condition number 44. All right. Uh, just off the record for a moment, I'm looking, I don't see a violation of 44 on the motions that I had. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. How do you plead to the violations in each motion? True or not true? True. Your Honor, we'll waive the remaining violated conditions. No objections. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 44, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility in each cause number? and up to a $1,500 fine in each cause number. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number 44? Yes, ma'am. In each cause number, the court will find violation of condition number 44 true. Is there a proposed agreement? Yeah, there is, Your Honor. And that is to revoke the individual offer of probation and to send it through to one year in the state jail facility on both uh, cause numbers. That is the agreement, Judge. We asked those aren't correct. All right. Why should I do that? Judge, she had she was unsuccessful. Um, she's been in custody for some time. I know that she wanted to address the court and be open to any questions you may have. Yes. Why wasn't she this. successful in Esperanza Court? You want to raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Aisha Calderon. All right, you can lower your hand. So why were you unsuccessful in Esperanza Court? Um, it's just honestly, Your Honor, I'm trying to get back to my family. Um, I'm, I'm not. Just make this one up, Aisha, let me talk. Yeah, but why were you unsuccessful? Excuse me. Sorry. Why were you unsuccessful? That's my question. So you say you want to get back to your family. So that's why you were unsuccessful. No, ma'am. I'm. I was unsuccessful because I just. I can't do it, Your Honor. I'm. I'm trying Why not. To, um. Judge, may may I help? No, I mean I want to hear from her. Why? I understand. Why can't you do it? I tried, Your Honor. I tried. Um. I tried the whole treatment thing. Uh. I got on Suboxone. Um, I've been off drugs, but unfortunately, me and my judge from the Esperanza Court had a disagreement on the medication I was taking. Um, what medication for what? Suboxone mm -hmm. for for my drug use. Um, Thanks. when I was in the alcohol home, and uh, she don't think it fits me. She don't. She don't think it's right for me. It was helping me. I believe it was helping me because I've been off drugs. So, well, I mean, you can't be on, you know, that's sort of like when people are taking methadone for heroin, you're not supposed to be on methadone for the rest of your life because then you're just replacing another drug with, a, with another one. So you had a disagreement with your judge in that court, then what? Um, then I went back to jail yeah, and I'm here. So why didn't you just do what was asked of you? Um, I tried. And she violated me. That's why I'm here. Well, I mean, I'm sure she gave you a choice. It wasn't, we're just violating you. Were you not given a choice? Um, Either do what you're being told or you're getting a motion to revoke. Were those your two choices? Yeah, when I came to jail, she didn't, when I had court with her um through zoom when i was in the S when i was in the alpha home um she had told me that she violated me i was i came forward with her because she didn't know that i was on the medication that i was taking in the alpha home and um 
she said, okay, well, I'm going to violate you. Those weren't my conditions. Um, so I came to jail. What conditions are you talking about? For me being on medication, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to be on the Suboxone or methadone or anything like that. So she violated me. And when I came to jail, that's what happened. There you've taken me from A to Z and you've skipped over the little, 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 little fall in your story so let me see if I can get this right you were ordered into alcohol is that correct yes ma'am and while you were in alcohol you were on medication yes ma'am was this medication that was prescribed to you by a doctor I'm assuming uh, yes ma'am by the alcohol okay and did the judge know that the alcohol prescribed this to you? Uh, my counselor was there with me, yes. So when I was in court, my counselor was sitting with me. Oh, Mr. Garehan, you may continue to confer. Thank you, Judge. And but, but no, 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 no. I, I want to hear what she has to say. Yeah, she's a witness on the witness stand. You know, I want to help her. I know, I know. Um. People got to learn how to express themselves. So I understand I'm that. patient. But I have that's... patience in my pocket. I take it out if needed. So don't think that you're getting on my nerves or anything like that. I'm trying to get you to express to me what's going on because I need to make a decision whether or not I'm going to give you the year that you all agree to or either two years or anywhere in between. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So you're at the Apple home. Esperanza Court wanted you in Apple home. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. So then... Is Alpaholm the person who put you on the medication? Yes, ma'am. All right. So was the court aware that Alpaholm put you on the medication? No, not until two weeks after I was on the medication. But I didn't, like, think it was a problem. I thought being in the alpha home, I didn't really think, you know, that it would be a problem being that it was prescribed to me. Well, whenever you're in a treatment court, all medications are an issue, and you have to tell them about all medications you are on. Yes, ma'am. I see that now. So I still find it hard to believe that you're saying that the judge sent you back to me for that one violation. What else was going on at Esperanza Court? Because it had to be more than that. And I don't think, and if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. I don't think you're in treatment at Alcohol and all of a sudden you're on medication and the judge is just like, I'm done, you're on medication, you're being kicked out of the court. I find that hard to believe. So what else was going on that got you sent back to my court? Well, I, I left, Your Honor, I left the alpha home. All right, now we're getting to the, the situ, situation. So you left the alpha home. Yes, ma'am. And did anybody give you permission to leave the alpha home? No, ma'am. Why did you leave the alpha home? Because um, my judge said that she was putting a warrant out for my arrest. Uh, she wanted me to turn myself in, but I didn't. I, I left. All right. And where did you go? Um, to my friends that I was staying with, Marcy. Right. Any other questions? Yes, Judge. And then, so you voluntarily left off. Yes. That's the reason why you're here. Yes. And you take full responsibility for that, right? Yes, I do. You knew that was going to get you violated. Yes. And it was going to get you in trouble. You're going to get sent back to jail. You knew that, right? Yes. But you did it anyway. Right. I'm sorry. But you did that anyway? Yes. And you want to tell the judge that you take full... We talked about this earlier. You said you want to take full responsibility for your actions, right? Yes, ma'am. I, I do want to take full responsibility, judge. I, I realize now that... Um, Last time I had you in court, you had told me that my people, places, and things would basically get me nowhere, and they haven't. Um, I realize that now. So what you had told me earlier was that when the judge talked to you before, it was about who you were hanging out with, right? Yes. And the people you associate yourself with yes. would be the problem. Yes. still is a problem, right? Yes. That was something that you told me that you remember the judge telling me. Yes. And then 
now you have a plan going forward. Yes, I do. Where whenever you're released, whenever that is, be it whenever that is, that your plan is to move back and leave San Antonio. Yes. Where are you going to go? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. With, with my brother and my sister. And the reason is, is because you don't have the same temptations for drugs that you do in Pittsburgh because. I'm with my family. You don't, it's not as easy to get those when you know everybody in San Antonio. No, it's not. And does your brother and sister-in-law have children? No. All right. This is what the court is going to do. In each cause number, the court is granting the motion. The court will send it you to 18 months in the state jail facility, give you credit for any time served, $1,500 fine, time and money run concurrent. Cause numbers were run concurrently. And there's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. And each cause number, I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, because this is not a plea bargain agreement. You do have a limited right to appeal. And that right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion not the fact that you were on community supervision. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And also because these are felony convictions, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And if you would like, I could have you referred to the therapeutic community. I'm not in charge of whether or not they grant you uh, placement in the therapeutic community. That will be completely up to them. The therapeutic community does not increase the time that you're in custody. Uh, would you like that or no? Yes, ma'am. All right. So in each cause number, the court will recommend the therapeutic community. All right. We can go off the record. You're still going to have to change your life. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And changing people, places, and things, that is true. But make sure your changing of people, places, and things is not you running away from your problems. You understand? Because whenever you stop running, the problem that you were running away from is still right there. All right. Good luck to you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Just a second. Uh, judge, off the record, I want to say thank you so much. She was off the docket and we, she was in two. And so we brought her up and had the whole thing done. Oh, I'm nice. telling you, they are great. I just want to say thank you. Yeah, and say thank you to Rashawn. She she got it together too. She knows. <laughs> All right, Roland Diaz. And then after Roland Diaz, it's going to be Juan uh, De Hoyos Garcia. Then All right, if I can see Elizabeth Messiel. Messiel. Court is calling 2023 CR5382A, State of Texas versus Elizabeth. Teresa Messiel, could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Well, I'm going to wait for the defense. And are you Elizabeth Messiel? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? I have, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Messiel, I'm going to show you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are, Your Honor. Ms. Massiel, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, is there an application in this case? There is not, Your Honor. There, there was initially, Judge. We changed it to uh, no app today, Judge. All right, did you understand you're charged with the offense of theft under $2,500 enhanced as a state jail felony? So I had never heard this charge before, so I Googled it. And it basically states that if a person has been charged with a theft crime before, it enhances it. And it also enhances it if it is if they have stolen a catalytic converter, the person is a public servant, person is age 65 or older, a Medicare provider, or if they caused the fire alarm to go off. Range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility yes. and up to $10,000 fine. Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. 
Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? She has, Your Honor. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? She does, Judge. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? She was, Your Honor. Ms. Macias, has anyone threatened you? I'm sorry, Ms. Seale. Has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at 1.5 years in the state jail facility, concurrent with 70411, I'm sorry, 704510, taking into consideration grand jury number 812048, JN number 2127815. There's to be restitution, if any, to Target, located at 4522 Fredericksburg Road and Balcones Heights 78201. There's to be restitution to Patricio Esparza and cause number 720359 and taken in consideration cause number 720359. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense, is that the plea? It is, Your Honor. State, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? We filed motions, Your Honor, but we didn't go to trial, so they were not ruled upon. Then to the offense as charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence. Your Honor, I offer State's Exhibit 1 and the attachments. No any objections, Your Honor, for purposes of the plea. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent. Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. With regards to this 1.5 years, what is that about? I believe it's a year and a half, so 18 months. Probably using long terminology, sorry about that, Judge. Okay, and how much time does she have in? 11 days. Okay. So why are you stealing? I stole because um, um, I was in foster care and I was little. And I, I, was, I never really had nothing. So when my kids asked me for something. No, I because let me just tell you. How old are you? 27. 27? At some, did you say 27? Yes, ma'am. At some point, the choices you make are choices of your own making. You can't continue to, to blame the fact that you were in foster care on you continuing to steal. So again, we're back to the point, why are you stealing? And this is not, oh, my children asked me for something, so I, I've given this to them. Because the, again, this is the case where you took a child into Target to steal for you. And you were bringing a child into your criminal uh, criminal organization. So why 
are you having a child help you still? I didn't have the child help me still. No, you did. Because the, the five-year-old was pushing the cart with items in it. You were not pushing the cart. You had a five-year-old, according to this police report, you were walking in part in front of the shopping cart. That five-year-old was pushing a cart that you and your friends had loaded items with past the points of sale. That's what it says here. A child was pushing the cart. You were not pushing a cart. You knew you didn't pay for the items. Why are you having a five-year-old steal items for you and push the cart? One moment. You just said you were in foster care. So who is, who's your mother? Else. All right. So why are you hanging around with, with a mother who is telling you to steal and get in a five-year-old to steal? I I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. How can you not know? And for the record, Judge, um, the mother was a co-defendant in this case, and she has already pled to this as well. Is that correct, sir? Yeah. Yes, Judge. Uh, she um, she received one year, Judge. Okay. Yes, I know. She. Right. I I remember this case. So, again, why are you involving children in theft? I wouldn't involve my children. No. It's, it says that on the report, but it's, it's not. It's not your child? It's not my child. All right. So what you did then was you took an innocent child, somebody else's child, and I you're involving with, them in theft. I went with my mom to target just her child. And we so proceeded with, with your mother's child. And y'all proceeded to commit a theft and involve the child in your criminal enterprise. So when are you going to stop stealing? Are you just planning on spending the rest of your life in and out of facilities no, because you had about bad childhood. No, At some point, every tub got to sit on its own bottom. Yes. At some point when you're an adult, it's no longer your parents' fault. Even if you had a horrible parent, it's no longer their fault. At some point, your decisions are decisions of your own making. And this five-year-old y'all involved in your criminal enterprise, guess what? When he becomes an adult, and if he were to start stealing at some point he can't blame it on the mother who was a horrible mom and the sister who's a horrible sister who's getting him to commit crimes and if you were in foster care as you say you were then that means that your mother was not a good parent because otherwise you would not have been in foster care and you probably shouldn't be hanging around with her and if you're going to hang around with her you should probably be being a positive influence on your siblings' lives instead of teaching them how to steal from Target. People don't like when people steal. And anything could have went south with you all stealing. Sometimes people get shot when they steal. And so because of you and your mother, a five-year-old and the other children had to sit in a car and wait for somebody to come pick them up. And I'm sure they were sitting in the police car behind the cage window. And then everybody will be acting. Oh, I can't believe the police officers put a five-year-old in the car. When really what they should be saying, I can't believe an adult would have bought and Bob a five-year-old in criminal enterprise. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right, I'm gonna find you guilty, sentence you to 18 months in the state jail facility, give you credit for any time served. This will run concurrent with seven zero. Four five one zero, take in consideration eight one two zero four eight, Jan number two one two seven eight one five, seven two zero three five nine. There is to be no contact with any target in the United States of America, overseas, or anywhere. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. There is to be restitution and no contact with Patricia Esparza and cause number seven two zero three five nine. There's to be restitution to the target at 4522 Fredericksburg Road, Balcones Heights, 78201. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? Okay. Going to show you what the title trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? This, did you review yes. that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Did you sign it? Yes. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, 
you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we're going to go off the record. Here's the thing. Child Protective Services are, is in your life. You're old enough to know why they took you from your mom. And the fact that your mom is taking you on this criminal enterprise says she's not a good parent. She's, she's not a good parent to you, so you probably shouldn't be hanging around with her. She's not a good parent to your siblings. So if you're going to be hanging around with your mom, it should only be for you to keep an eye on your siblings so they won't grow up to think stealing is a good job and it's an occupation. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you.